Hello, I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another episode of CSK News. Actually, a lot of stories in today's episode. As always, they're all going to be timestamped down below. And also, I want to talk about for the second story, it's going to be all about roster lock. And I want you guys to comment down below when we do get to that story because it's very controversial. And I really want to hear your opinion on what you guys think about the roster lock situation, of course, involving SK Gaming with Bulls. But first off, let's hop into our first story, though. As of right now, we had SK, of course, winning the EPL Season 6 Finals yesterday against FaZe Clan. They beat them in that best of 5, 3-1. to one. And it was, you know, relatively a close match, but especially with FaZe's comeback on train which was halted and a lot of great clips did, which did come from that. I'll show you guys a clip of that in a bit here but I do want to talk about of course the tweets which happened post match uh, of course SK Gaming winning that matchup eventually they felt the need to, uh, to tweet out about this and some of those tweets were regarded for, by, by many FaZe fans as offensive by, by me personally I think it was actually just a you know a heat of the moment kind of thing and I personally would love to see any top teams like this have a rivalry and I was not offended by any of the tweets whatsoever. If you guys want to know the main tweet I'm actually referring to was of of course, Cold Zero's later deleted tweet, which I'll show you guys on screen right now, of course, saying they had developed a super team two years ago. FaZe Clan did not know about it, and simply putting that every single player of SK was greater than every single FaZe player. So really not necessarily an offensive tweet, but although Nico himself and other FaZe members obviously were a bit offended by this, we had Nico's tweet on screen for all of you, as well as Nico's cousin got into the thing and actually posted this tweet uh, explaining to all of us how, how professional CSGO players should act and how SK Gaming reacted. And of course, you have the inverse. Uh, I'll... I'll you know, I'll defend FaZe a little bit here. If FaZe Clan had actually won the tournament and then tweet out about this, you'd have a lot of angry Brazilian fans. But overall, guys, I love the rivalry. Were you offended by this? I didn't find the tweets necessarily offensive, but Cold Zero did finish off by saying and actually apologizing later on deleting that original tweet. His apology actually on screen for all of you, which does translate into saying, I heard some annoying jokes from the players personally and also some interviews that teased us, and that is why I got mad or why he got triggered and eventually uh, tweeted out that, of course, semi-offensive tweet. So what do you guys think about this? I personally, I love the rivalry guys, especially because these two teams are clearly our number one and two teams in the world. Going to be competing many times in the future and definitely in 2018 as well at top level events. All these other sports have great rivalries like this. And again, there's not many sports or inside esports where you can actually kind of get this kind of agitation. All those sports out there like football and soccer and baseball, you know, you kind of get heated moments on the court or on the field. You can't really see that in CSGO. So I would love to see more of a rivalry like this. But also bouncing off to our more important story, of course, our second story today, which it's all about the roster lock situation. So also involving SK Gaming, other teams out there as well, like Immortals could be uh, involved in Team Liquid, of course, with Steel. A lot of people want to see not only Team Liquid compete with Steel, but also more importantly, they want to see SK Gaming at this major in 2018 with the best team they possibly have. And that, of course, would be with Bolts on that roster. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys have very, uh, you know, a variety of opinions on this matter. And a lot of people out there, in, in my own opinion, what I'm seeing right now is people saying, let's just get rid of roster lock moves altogether. So please, Please do me a favor, guys, hear me out, and please comment down below what your solution would be to the current roster lock situation. Of course, the current roster lock rules that we see at every single major right now is if you actually try and qualify in any way at the minor, the minor qualifier, and of course, later on as well, if you try and qualify for a major as far down the line as the minor goes or the minor qualifier goes, you cannot play an event with any other team. So once you try and qualify, let's say for a guy like we had, of course, formerly Steel of Immortals, he tried to qualify for the minor with Immortals. They failed to qualify no matter what, even if they did make it through, he still cannot play for a separate team when it comes later on in the line at, at the minor, at the major qualifier, or even at the major itself. So of course, Steel falls short of this with Team Liquid and also Bolts. Both tried to qualify with Immortals. They failed to do so, and they both cannot play for their future teams, SK Gaming and Liquid correspondingly. So again, you you have to really analyze the positives and negatives of the roster lock situation, which I'll go into really briefly right now. And I'm going to start with the positives because it seems that not many people out there like to talk about the positives of the roster lock situation. And I think, of course, the major one is it does avoid the super teams out there are teams paying high prices, ridiculously high prices for top tier players to switch over for them for a single weekend. So let's say maybe the very, very niche situation which we would have this and you guys might think, oh, this can certainly not happen. Well, you're wrong. It definitely would happen in the case that let's say, let's say a guy like Simple or Cool Zera wants to play for a lesser CIS or Brazilian team throughout the qualifier, knowing that Navi, their four-man roster, can still qualify without Simple, or the four-man, uh, you know, of course, SK Gaming, their four-man roster can qualify without Cold Zera. Let's say they want to send Cold Zera down to the LG squad and have them also qualify for the major, and then, of course, send him back to SK Gaming for the major itself. So you go down to the minor system, and you have Cold Zera play for LG. They make it through to the major qualifier, and, of course, SK Gaming managed to qualify with their coach playing, let's say, and they, they 
they certainly would make it to that system. Then that is the one extreme case where you can actually abuse the system. Uh, even with, of course, with this roster lock put in place, you cannot do that. And I think that's the one big thing that actually stops me from wanting this to actually be out of place. I really do enjoy roster locks, but let's go into the negatives now. So if you guys have any contradictions with that, leave a comment down below. That's the one thing. People would abuse this system out of control, and you say it wouldn't happen, and some of you might say, oh, well, if a team's going to pay a ridiculous amount of money to have a player sub in for them for a short amount of time, psh, let them go waste that money. The thing is, that's not the right argument because people would do it. People would certainly pay $10,000 for a weekend for Simple to join their team, and Simple would probably take some of those offers. You really wouldn't blame him, and this would definitely, you'd be upset if a team that got cheated out of a spot because a, a, a god tier player joined a lower tier team just to help them qualify. You would be upset, and it certainly would happen, and yes, players would take those offers. Now, on top of that, though, of course, there are the negatives of the current uh, roster lock situation being in place, the first of which, there's really no certification as to what the rules being in place are. Of course, we had Disco Doblin a long time ago. He tried to qualify with Team Epsilon, later played with Team Fnatic, so he broke that rule. And then, of course, in the past, we, we are now having this rule be put in place for other players where it wasn't put in place for Disco Doblin. So I think a real big briefing of the rule needs to be released by Valve or these tournament organizers to let us know what the rule was and how Disco Doblin actually slipped by that rule and other players weren't allowed to. And then, of course, the main overall negative right now is the fact that Immortals and, of course, SK gaming are clearly and liquid as well are clearly not trying to abuse the system we have many players out there i would say probably a majority of pro players just based on the response so far you know there's probably there's there are very few pro players who don't want these teams especially sk gaming to have the best lineup of all time with bolts on that roster some pro players probably secretly don't want it to happen but other pros and probably a majority of pro players want to see that best roster at the major so they can actually compete against that good roster and if they happen to beat them of course they, they want it to be against a legitimate sk gaming but of course they're not trying to abuse the system. It's very clear that people knew that the struggles that SK Gaming was going through during the qualifiers, or they, of course, uh, they didn't have to go through the qualifiers at all. They had, but uh, again, Immortals did. But it was very clear they had troubles with Phelps during that roster time. And because the main problem here, because major qualifier and of course the minor qualifier announcements are so soon and they're so abrupt and they're announced the week beforehand, these teams don't have enough time to figure this out. And that is the one main negative that needs to be fixed. If roster locks are to remain in place, and again, leave your comments down below. How can we fix this system? And Valve certainly needs to respond and we need as much help as possible, you know, on Twitter, on Facebook, just sharing this kind of stuff on social media to get their attention. The one main problem, of course, is the fact that we need to actually be clear when these majors are so teams can plan outwardly, not have to decide a week ahead of time that they're going to have to play with Phelps or play with certain players they don't want to play with. And they have time to actually make those roster changes well ahead of the majors. And of course, the minor qualifiers. We had teams like Ty Lu, like Immortals really get kind of called out when the minor qualifiers came around and they had to finalize those rosters very abruptly. So that's, there's a lot of problems right now with EPL roster lock and of course roster lock in general with major events as well. Leave a comment down below what you guys think, what can be fixed, what's wrong with it right now. There's so many there's so many things to talk about. I want to cover it all in this episode guys. So thank you very much for that and now on to other stories. And another very huge news for all of you Navi fans out there. We were talking about Navi very previously and that's the fact that Navi has now re-signed a majority of their roster for the next two years. And I can actually understand a lot of you Navi fans out there might be disappointed a lot of people were kind of disappointed as well that Edward was signed again. Him being their long-term member, I was actually very surprised. He gets another two years at this uh, at this organization. He's already been there since 2013. It almost feels like now he has his tenure. He's been there for, for those who don't know what tenure is, it means, he's been there for so long now. It almost feels like he solidified his spot no matter what his performances are. And I'm almost disappointed, but uh, then again, I'm not really shocked by this. Of course, they've now signed Simple, Edward, and Flamey. And Electronic did sign back in November his two-year contract. So that's that's going to be at least their four-man roster unless one of them is sent to the bench for the next two years time now of course it's not a long-term contract like the five-year ones Virtus pro signed but it's, a, it's very significant to see they're, they're guaranteed this four-man roster guys and probably gonna be paying a hefty amount for that so would likely prefer to actually have these guys start on the roster and not go to the bench so that's their four man's got four-man roster so far of course electronic flamey edward and simple but alongside that very curiously they did not announce zeus's future plans now zeus been kind of a known uh these past few years or the past year and a half or so to be bouncing back between Gambit and Na'Vi. So it's very curious why he was had not been announced as his signing of two-year contract. No one's actually sure right now. As of right now, his future is unknown, but he was the one player on the Na'Vi roster to apparently not sign the full contract as of right now. That's all we know, guys. So a new Na'Vi roster has been certified, and that's some very exciting news. Also, bouncing off yesterday's episode, update on that, we did have uh, Richard Lewis posted a video, which I'll link down below for all of you, his official goodbye for Semler. It is, it's pretty much, it's 100% official now. Richard Lewis is coming out about it 
right, guys. Semler will be leaving CSGO casting and commentating for the Overwatch League starting in January, and Richard Lewis posts his goodbye about that, as well as a little background about how they know each other. So a very good video. If you guys want to check that out, I'll link it down below. But now on to our very last story for today's episode, a packed episode. We might actually break 10 minutes, which is nice, because ad revenue has just been, I mean... Frick. And that's for the announcement of the latest and greatest German team out there for CSGO, now going to be known as Team Sprout, which is actually very ironic. I don't know if they knew they were going to be signed sometime soon. If you guys remember this ex-Penta roster, after uh, the three-man roster that is when they actually left the Penta organization, they first were known as Team Seed, and now they become Sprout. They actually, actually joined the organization and have been signed by them. So they're being paid for this, and of course, they're partaking in the major qualifier upcoming for 2018 majors. So it's going to be cool to see how these guys do, and they have also had the, uh, that three-man ex-Penta roster Joined up with former Penta players as well as former Mouse players. That will be Spitty and Dennis. So for those of you guys who are curious, it's not Fnatic Dennis. It's Mouse Sports Dennis and Mouse Sports Spitty. Not the best acquiring. You know, uh, of course, the last time we saw Spitty, he was struggling severely. But I'm very excited to see what this roster can do. They're all firmly acquainted from the past. And we'll see how they do, guys, at the major qualifier coming up here pretty soon. So I'm very excited about this announcement. I'm very glad they actually got signed by an organization. As always, hope you guys all enjoyed this episode of CSK News. If you guys did, make sure to leave a comment down below. Maybe even a like if you if you. If if you did enjoy the episode and as always i'll see you guys in a couple days some more with my thoughts don't matter episodes and more importantly in a couple days some more csk news episodes as well hope you guys all enjoy remember, my name is jake remember i like you and uh goodbye